I used to get very irritated with that whenever he used to say that, okay, I'm tired, I'll go to bed. There was no communication only between us. Our relationship was really getting bad. Biggest challenge that I faced was I was not able to switch gears from my bachelor's life to a married life. Everybody would say lovely couple, but we knew how bad our marriage was. She would sit frowning, not a smile on her face, warm hugs and kisses which I used to get immediately after marriage were completely gone. The only solution I had was go pray in front of the altar at home. How God can bring us together from two different places and join us and become one, it is shocking least surprising for me how God can do that. I'm Nelson D'Souza. I was born in India. Jesus, please don't be mad. And I was raised in a Catholic family. My mom and dad, first thing they taught me was to go to church. And that's how I grew. I know that it makes you sad. Hi, I'm Mary. I'm bo I was born and brought up in Goa. And I was raised by my parents and I have another two sisters. We were total three siblings. When I was just about eight years old, after my first Holy Communion, first thing my dad did was he made me an altar boy, and that, that's how my journey started. So every morning, first thing that I had to do is that arrive at church at 5.30 a.m. so that I could attend the 6, 6 a.m. Mass, prepare for the Mass. So that's how everyday routine was attending the Holy Eucharistic Mass. And then my mother instituted the next habit of saying the Rosary in the evening as a family. So that is how we actually grew as a family. I did my dentistry and looking forward for a good life partner. So my picture of marriage was, uh, I wanted a girl like Mother Mary. So that's what I used to always pray for, but I didn't know what it means after marriage. My parents were also looking out for it. So I met Nelson on a matrimonial site, that is uh, jibansati.com. And actually my father first you know, looked at his profile and he liked it. And then he told me, just check out this guy and have a chat with him. And we started chatting. Uh, we first started on Messenger and then we, we exchanged numbers. So he used to call me regularly. You know? And then I felt, okay, this boy is good. He was also God-fearing and came from a Catholic background. And that was the main criteria I was looking at. And I thought, okay, we somehow matched. That's how our conversation started off on, that time it was a messenger. I hadn't even seen her. And chatting on the messenger itself, I had actually fallen in love with Mary, is what I could feel. And that happened sometime in 2006, December. And by 2007, December, we were married. Life was good. Things were smooth, we went for a honeymoon and I conceived immediately. And it's only after the honeymoon and all I realized, okay, this is life. So we were gonna have a first child, we were all set. Our first child was born. The thing about marriage was pretty simple and straight. As a man of the house, I was willing to work for the family, to raise the family, you know, to, to support the family in every ways. And I was open for my spouse. If required, she, if she had to work, let her work, but it was not mandatory that she had to work because I knew at some point in time we will have children. Children also needed that focus. I just realized that Nelson was so attached with the youth and uh, I was just, uh, you know, waiting to get some time with him, but he was so busy with his practices. 
and with Easter coming up, he was the whole time he used to be in church with the youth practicing for the uh, like for Monday Thursday Good Friday, and I used to, I started getting really irritated, and at that time I was also pregnant. And uh, due to some complications, I was on bed rest and I realized Nelson really didn't have time for me because I was on bed rest, I didn't even go to church. And I was just at home waiting for him and I realized that he really was not bothered about his marriage. He was in, still in his own world with the youth. And that really brought some frustration within me. And after that, I went back to Goa for the delivery and my our son was born, he came back. And life was back normal, the same thing continued and we were really lacking that time to spend together and what I had thought before that we'll have a nice romantic marriage and we'll be spending time with each other, growing up as a family, I just realized that all those dreams were shattered. Biggest challenge that I faced was I was not able to switch gears from a bachelor's life to a married life. That is the biggest challenge that I was facing. So my life went on the way it was. I never bothered about it. And that was my personal life, which I couldn't leave. For somewhere I do not know, I'd become, that had become a part of my life, which I was not able to detach from it. Not that if I'd stopped choir, the choir would die. If I'd stopped the youth activities, the youth would die. The choir already always existed even before I was born. And it would always exist even after I, I leave the world. The same thing with the youth. But the thing is that I was not able to detach. I was not able to switch gears. Second biggest challenge was, I won't say it is a career, but as a man I knew, I'd seen my dad taking the baton for the family and earning. So it's probably the same thing I had mirrored upon me saying that, you know, as a man I had to work, I had to support the family. For me, it was not a career, but for me, I knew every month I had X amount of money that I had to get into the family. At that point in time, I was in a full-time job and a very good job, but that was not sufficient. I said, I was also doing a business part-time. So what used to happen was, early morning, I used to see my first son when he was sleeping. When I used to get back home, I used to see my son sleeping. So literally for a year's time after marriage, I would say, I used to only see him grow horizontally. What used to happen was two people were getting impacted by this one is Mary, second was my, was our son. He was uh, working hard for the family, but at that time I didn't realize that. I was very frustrated because I felt he was uh, moving ahead in his career and I felt I was just stuck at home. Uh, just looking after the kids and I wanted to focus on my career too. I just felt he was marching ahead and I was, you know, lagging behind somewhere in my career to do my post-graduation and, you know, uh, have my own clinic and that was my dream even before marriage. Like, I thought we would be able to balance both the family and my career too. So I was really getting frustrated looking at him marching ahead and me lagging behind. I wanted probably similar qualities in my wife too. But at the same time, I knew in the current generation, uh, women also educated, they want to have their career. So I was not against in terms of they wanted to have their career, but I had my mindset in terms of when children come in, how are we going to take care of them? I want one person to be there for them at any given point in time when I can take the baton of earning for them, you know, supporting the family. After another three years, my daughter was born and I thought, okay, there's no point, you know, waiting for Nelson. It just, I just felt it was just a waste of time just waiting for him at home. But he was so busy with his own, uh, uh, like, passions about, you know, he was still with the youth activities and by then, but also started, he has started his own business. Initial stages, Mary didn't know how to cook. You know, no salt sometimes, no, no spices sometimes. It used to irritate me. But at the same time, I used to also understand, okay, she was, she was working very hard for the family in terms of the domestic side. So at times, I used to control myself, but I used to lose. And I used to tell her, this is, this is no assault. And she used to feel bad, and then starts the argument. I 
I was just getting irritated within myself because I was feeling I was just I was just stagnant just being with the kids and our relationship was really getting bad as the days went on every time Nelson would come home I would be waiting to speak to him about uh, my career and there would be an argument and this argument just increased with the days there were times and that became a part of our lives this went on you know one side is my bachelor's life which i was continuing another side was that my business life that i was continuing i never used to feel that somebody was waiting for me at home i used to get very irritated with that whenever he used to say that okay i'm tired i'll go to bed there was no communication only between us so and every time when i used to raise the issue it would have also ended in an argument he would just raise his voice i would also reply back very badly to him and uh, end up crying and then the whole night i would be crying and next morning again no communication he would go to work and it had it would have just become a cycle slowly she started putting in my head saying that she wanted to establish a career as well because she's a dentist that was uh, okay with me but what was shocking to me was that one fine day she came and said she wanted to pursue her uh, masters in dental surgery and which meant to say that she had to move into state and she didn't mind even to take uh first son at that time I had only one we had only just one son and she didn't mind moving uh into state move take the child and go and whenever I wanted to come I could come so these are some of my emotional moments uh, which is quite important the reason because I was not prepared for it because it in my my heart and mind was very clear uh after marriage we will live together with all struggles ups and downs she wanted to go and she was very adamant about it and i put my foot down and i said this is not going to happen this is not what i thought as a family would be and this is not we discussed what the family would be or the way we would raise a family i was pretty hard on it and i wouldn't change or mince my words i was pretty clear about it that's really that was one thing probably which ticked her and that snowballed into arguments every day she would sit frowning not a smile on her face those warm warm hugs and kisses which i used to get immediately after marriage were completely gone i used to feel who am i working for what am i working for you know people in the house don't even feel for it i used to be so angry bottling up all those frustrations within me and removing it worst thing was children were scared of me because i had become a terror in the house and besides nelson was so busy in his own world he never had the time to even be with the kids he never spent that time you know playing with them my daughter wouldn't even go to him there was some bonding with my son and him but my daughter hardly would go to him she would just cling to me he was just cold he never helped me in any like he felt he wanted everything to be perfect when he comes home and i just felt instead he should come and you know just help me clear up things or help me in the cooking or something when i'm cooking because it is very straining the whole day you know when you are with kids but uh, sometimes you know keeping it within me it, it used to be really frustrating the only thing i had was we had a home altar and i would go and sit there and you know i would cry in front of the altar and ask god please some solution to it we cannot live like this throughout our life like you know in such a bad thing and outside we were looking so good everybody would say lovely couple but we knew you know within among within ourselves like how bad our marriage was and the only solution i had was go pray in front of the altar at home so we were prepared for it. we started our own clinic So thankfully it was in the his same house set up I had my office on top I used to live in the middle store uh, middle floor and right at the bottom of the floor and most patients is to come after 7 pm in the evening and that is the time I used to enter the house dog tired and I wanted Mary's presence in the house because children had children needed attention to children had to be fed we had to end the day and she used to start the day For me it was like frustrating I said I used to tell Mary why do you want to focus on this career like this why don't you just stop 
minimize it and focus on the children now because enough money is coming. God is blessing us with money. It's money is not a question. But she, she was not understanding that, which for her it is like, I have also studied, I've done this, I've done that. I also want to establish. I say, it's okay, work a couple of hours, it's fine. But children are getting neglected and the same question is to get bounced on me. It was so, so frustrating. The only thing I would go, I would just pray to Mother Mary or say, Mama, please, please pray for the situation. I never thought a marriage would have reached this stage, you know, but it was so worst. But I knew there should be some sort of a solution here. One thing that I have in me is that whenever I go through emotional times in my life and I'm emotionally down, I'm not able to make a decision, I'm struggling, I have challenges. One place that I go to is the tabernacle in the church. But what used to happen was because our children were growing, I couldn't attend the Holy Eucharistic Mass early mornings now because I had to drop Emmanuel to the private van that we had hired. So I used to miss the Mass. But what I made it as a mandate was, after dropping him to the van, I used to go on a walk, a rosary-filled walk. So I to, it's a half an hour walk, saying two rosaries. At this point in time, in the rosary, every, every day, I used to put one thing in as a petition. Mother Mary, Mama used to call her, I still call her. I said, I know there's something wrong that's going on in our relationship. And one fine day when he came, he would go to drop my son to the, to the van and then go for his walks. And I would be with my daughter at home. And I would think, okay, this is my life now, just stuck in the house. And one fine day when he came, I just taunted him, okay, you finished your walk. And that was the biggest change. And I didn't expect him to say that. He said, okay, from tomorrow onwards, we'll both go for the walk, morning walk. And we'll take a, Esther in the pram. So that was a new journey we started together, where we started going on our walks and we started saying the rosary together. And uh, we started praying basically for a relationship because we both knew that we were really having a bad relationship and we had to do something about it. Marriage is so difficult to live especially when people are coming from two different families, not knowing each other. Even if we had known each other, we are two different people. Simple. We were two imperfect people coming together to live a perfect life. How is it possible? I said, God, help us. The three aspects that Lord worked. One is my business. Second thing is my children. And finally is my relationship with Mary. It was so sequential. First thing for me was, I thought, so much money is required all the time, right? So that my children get, have a better life. For me, my plan was very simple. I needed about 10 million rupees. That was about crore of rupees because I was a financial planner for each child. So I knew I had to work this much. That was always running in my head. So for me, it is like, Mary, you should understand. But what, how God beautifully worked for me was one of my mentors, who was already at the age of 75, was earning about one crore to one and a half crores a year, who had about 30 staff. I had attended one of the seminars and how God exactly pricked my heart at that point in time. He came up on the stage. He said a couple of things. Don't do what I did for this 45 years to 50 years of my life. I'm already 75 years. I have six children. When I was young, I thought money was important. But today, what millions and billions that I'm earning I'm willing to forego, but I can't get the time that I lost with my children. I can't get the time that I lost with my wife. I had three drivers in the house, one to ensure just for my children, one to ensure to take my wife for shopping. I never had the time to go with her. He shared one thing, don't lose the time what I've lost with my children. Even if I pay millions and billions of rupees now, I can't get what they what, what I've lost today because they're they're grown and they're gone. I said I was doing the same thing with my children. I have to make a change, I said. Second thing that happened was whenever we pray to God, God actually speaks to different ways through people, through books. Another beautiful book that I read was uh, by Robin Sharma called Monk Who Sold His Ferrari, Who Will Cry When You Die? 
and leader without a title. That really hit me so hard. Very simple message that conveyed was that, who are you earning all this for? And those people will not be around you. Spend time with them who are there with you, your wife, your children, your family. That was a turning point for me in terms of career and my children. Third thing, the best thing that happened was marriage encounter. Later on, one of my fa family friends, she would always come in outside the church. Oh, at the re we were part of the renewal, so she would meet us somewhere during the, the retreats and tell us there's something known as marriage encounter, and it's it just makes a, a good marriage better. Why don't you try it? And I knew for Nelson, time was very important, and the marriage encounter weekend start. It, it used to be live in weekends those days, and it used to start on Friday and end on Sunday, and I know Nelson didn't have that time. So I would just say, okay, until maybe some other time. And it just went on. And one day I remember I was at uh, the Logos Retreat Center on a Saturday and she came and told me. And at that time I just said, God, if you want, you can make this happen. And I told her, if you want, you can speak to Nelson. Maybe you can come sometimes at home and speak to him. That particular evening, they happened to come. And God had prepared me. I had no other choice because a couple of questions that the person who came placed before me, I just happened to open my thought process and says, probably God is wanting me to come and immediately I said yes. And that was a live-in um, you know, setup where we had to go there and stay for three days. That was the difficult thing, hardest part for me because my business was running and I needed that time for business. I said, okay, let's go and do it. And in my mind, I knew Nelson wouldn't have agreed. He won't agree. So I just, I just felt, okay, it was just a waste of time. I mean, for them just coming home and, you know, to convince Nelson. I, I, I for sure knew that Nelson wouldn't agree. But when I had bath and I came out, I was shocked to know that Nelson had agreed and we were going for the weekend. So I was, I had lots of hopes and I was very excited, you know, within myself, but I didn't want to express it to Nelson because, you know, I was so worried that he might suddenly change his mind. Before, my mom and dad I used to argue a lot and I never knew to argue about because I was very small before. But God answered my prayers without even like praying. He took Mama and Dada to major encounter. And then after that, things slowly started, started changing for me as well because I made friends there. My Mama and Dada made friends there. And then after a while, um, they stopped arguing. And, they, and we all started to sit down as a family and also talk, laugh, make jokes. Everything went on so well. What amazes me is that two different people, two different mindsets, two different cultures, two different habits, how God can bring us together from two different places and join us and become one. It is shockingly surprising for me how God can do that. <laughs> what changed me personally was during the sessions when I kept on hearing something called as covenant marriage. It was so beautifully explained during the session, really it caught my eyes and really pricked my heart, where they explained what was covenant relationship, first of all, between God and man, where it was explained to us saying that, God says to us that whether you do your part or not, I will surely do mine. I will be faithful to you, even though, if you, even though you may not be faithful to me. Uh, the biggest correction that I was, I did rather was, I, I came out of the youth activities. That was a very big decision that I did. And third thing that I did was in terms of my business activity, I realized my, my wife and my children were supposed to be the center of my life. That was what the marriage encounter taught. You keep your wife and your children at the center and you work around everything else around them. By doing that, early mornings I was able to give time for Mary in terms of preparing breakfast for children, getting them ready, dropping them to the school van, and both of us going for a walk, you know, saying the rosary together, she coming back, she going to a clinic and I starting my business. And evenings I used to ensure that by 5.30 or 6, I cut off everything and I'm back. So God is so beautiful. He was thinking of us all the time. I did not realize that bit. By doing that, what happened was, first thing, 
my focus started becoming Mary and her interests and the children. So that was what really touched me and the, the chain that, that I got through marriage encounter after attending. Just not one session, as I said, it's a multiple session which took to crack me from within. After doing the marriage encounter, I realized that there were many things, many ways in which I had to change. So then slowly I started cutting out practice in the evening, especially after seven. And we decided to make rosary at seven. Like he would come home and we would say the rosary. And then we used to have prayer time and some time with the kids and dinner time. So we made that a habit. And that actually changed the whole situation at home. I soon saw the response from Nelson also. He also started making changes from his side. He started, you know, winding up the business. Before, he would just continue. Sometimes at night, he wouldn't come down. 11, 12 at night, especially at the year ending. And I used to be so irritated. But then I realized that when he saw the changes in me, slowly I, I saw him also changing. So there was a time when uh, I really couldn't, you know, have that time or make time for children. But today, after the self-realization and the change that I want to do for the sake of children and Mary, now I spend that time with qualitatively in terms of, you know, more connected with children now as much as they are connected with me. And wherever we go, Mary also likes to join. So all of us go as a family. So complete dynamics as a family has transformed, I would say, and that's become a way of life for us by God's grace. God always says, I think if, uh, when people had asked Christ, he says, uh, uh, you know, what do you say about divorce? You know, he says, there is no divorce. He says, how is that Moses approved divorce? He says, Moses approved divorce because if you, you guys were so hard hearted. That's the reason why Moses approved. But for Christ, for God, there is no divorce, right? So that is what always, you know, rings in my ears. That's, the, that's, that's what actually keeps on breaking my heart saying that there is no word called a divorce in a Christian marriage. There are struggles, there are challenges, but there is one high priest who stands there and waits for us saying that, come to me and I will show you how to make your marriage beautiful. Towards God, rise up.